Cast off. Change Beetle. It's time once again to review a Japanese Bugman, and this time we are walking the path of heaven, as opposed to the path to Detroit, the path to the 800 Acre Woods, I don't know what other path there is, but we are only concerned with one, the path of Kamen Rider Kabuto from the SIC series. This, whoo, here, let me just give you an example here, because I don't think I've actually done this in an SIC review, because I actually have the figure art. So right off the bat, I want to give you a size comparison. You are dealing with a much larger action figure than normal. It's a really odd scale. I'm not sure what U.S. line to compare it to. But SICs, they are bulky. And this way, I have a nice chance to show you the difference in detailing between the two characters, which is something I rarely have the opportunity to do. We're going to start with a head with a magnificent amount of detail as well as those insectoid eyes. Oh man, that multi-layered look never really gets old. I love how they accomplish that. You can see the same in the figure art, but not quite as prominently detailed. Here you can also tell the difference in aesthetics between figure arts and the SIC line. Whereas Kabuto is much more accurate to the show, or this Kabuto I should say, uh, the SIC version, a lot more intricate detailing. They've taken a lot of liberties with the design to add a lot more intricate details. You can tell in the horn alone, there's a lot of little etches, grooves that aren't on the actual model of the show or the, any of the other toys. The chest as well, which is completely smooth on the normal Kabuto design. Take a look at all that intricate detail, a lot of molding in there, a lot of grooves, a lot of asymmetrical detailing too. Even stuff that looks the same, like the rivet here on the shoulder, is different on the opposite shoulder and you've got a lot of extra little details like a little bit of a rust look either rust or burnt metal it's a little hard to tell on this toy it's whatever you want it to be it does add a little bit of personality to the otherwise dull gray metal you can see the molding on the arms silver makes it come out really well really nice it gives it a really kind of a dingy metal look more of that rusting or burning whichever as well as here on the leg panels they really do not skip on the details, even in these panels, which are the die-cast components of this toy, by the way. And I guess the final main detail to show off is the belt. You've got a lot going on here, too. Yellow, translucent plastic, just to get that piece to look just right. The horn is nicely painted in the appropriate gold. And you can even see the little legs of the Zector have been painted on, too. So they really don't miss anything on these toys, which is what really impresses me. Now on to articulation, and if you think I'm rushing a little bit here, there is a reason. Just stick with me. Articulation-wise, it's pretty much standard fare for the SIC line. It's a full range of motion inside the shoulder that comes up and down in the ball joint, just like a figure art does. Double-jointed arms at the, at the elbows. Fully painted elbows, by the way. Again, small details. As well as a wrist that both swivels and hinges. So, Stay there. You got the same thing going on the legs. The double jointed knees work fairly well. The armor does not get in the way. It's molded just right to avoid that. Also in the ankle, you do have the rotation. You have the swivel. You have the sideways swivel and the toes fold up. So all four points of articulation I like in the foot accounted for. Torso also, you got the ball joint inside the torso for mold moving around. The waist articulates as well though not to very much of a degree. That torso joint is the main one you'd be using for poses. Hips, mm, hips are a downside, I will admit, because the, uh, these hip skirts made of soft plastic kind of hinder how much outward articulation it has. He still gets about 90 degrees, so uh, any stance you want, you can fix. But kicking is a little bit hindered. You can, however, extend the leg up this way as well as backward so you can well this this isn't a kick that Kabuto would use 
but I'm sure there is a way of doing his traditional rider kick and counter kick. And the last bit of articulation is the head, which does have a ball joint on the top of the neck and at the bottom, giving you a full range of motion and full range of dance moves. Now, because of this and because of what I'm going to show up next, his shoulders are a little low and his head is set a little high. I find he poses best when his head is downcast just a little bit. You do have a little bit of gimmicking going on for extra positions and poses. For starters, the horn on the Zector does fold forward. Not completely, so don't force it. But you do have a little bit of motion, so you can show him pulling the lever. And, strangely enough, the horn on his head folds down. Even the inside of that is painted. It folds up, doesn't click into place, just kind of frictions there. I'm not sure why this was included, but, oh well, hard to complain about any little trick you can do. Now, how about accessories? Well, he pretty much gets the standard fare. Multiple hands, including the two fists, as well as opened hands. These are relaxed open hands, rather than splayed open wildly. You also get hands for grabbing onto things, which is for all of the weapons he comes with. Kabuto's weapon is his kunai, which he actually has all three forms of represented, but none of them transform. They're all individualized. You get the axe form, you get the blaster form, which is basically the same thing, just without the huge blade hanging off the bottom, and of course, his traditional kunai, which it's a little different getting them into his hands because you gotta get his fingers inside, inside, go inside, there we go, as well as around there. Sometimes this takes a little bit of flexing on the thumb, but nothing that's gonna break the toy. And it really is a nice accessory count to include all three modes as individual toys. A lot of less parts to lose that way. You also get this little Zector. And while it is well painted and detailed, as all of these toys seem to be, I can't find a freaking thing to do with this. I have looked, this, week, this review is actually delayed a week because I have no idea what to do with this. It doesn't replace the one on the belt, it doesn't remove, there's no place to clip it in anywhere. Um, I'm not even sure if this thing can hold it. If it, can, it can't hold it. So I really have no idea why they included it. It is incredibly random. However, the one they did include, and the most important accessory of all, you get one extra hand pointing to the heavens, which is just for his signature pose, but has a few more uses. Now, why am I rushing through this toy so fast? Because this thing has so many modes I have to cover. This is only one of five, five modes this toy can take on. Now, this one, I'm not going to demonstrate all the part forming to get from one mode to another because, well... It's a little involved. So you give me a minute and I'll just take this away now. Now while I won't be demonstrating switching parts because it is so involved, I do want to show you what the toy looks like with all the parts removed just before you start assembling hyper mode because I think you'll appreciate how much of the detailing has to go. Whoa, oh, 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 God. God that looks like something you'd find at a yard sale. You're here, here, uh, let me, let me take this away. We'll, we'll just go to hyper mode. Change Hyper Beetle! Mode 2, and now we are looking at Hyper Mode Kabuto. This is probably my favorite mode because it fixes most of the, uh, most of, most of the little problems with how low his shoulders were set and how high his head was. The, it was made that way for the armor to have room. And now his proportions are pretty much spot on. He's got a lot more going on here, so once again, it is a detailed look that we are in need of. First off, huge beetle horn taking up most of the toy now. We see the teal eyes representing the Hapato's hyper mode and the silver painted head. Not a lot of the detailing different, so, well, that's about as expected, I guess. The chest mode, you can see a lot of this is translucent plastic with red lying underneath, giving, giving it a really nice effect. And you can see there's still a little bit of the rusting going on, so I would assume this to be speed burn, I guess. You can see it up here on top of the shoulders, too. Which also, a lot of nice detail. That metallic red paint just compl 
just really pops. It's really, really nice detail. Uh, you can see here on the arms, the arm guards have now changed to these horn-shaped panels. And the hands have now gone red with a little bit more detailed paint job. On the side, the biggest change, I guess, you can see the Hyper Zector, which is the reason he's in the clock up mode. You can see the side panels, these are still die cast, but they have gone to metallic red. Again, here in the ankles, some dark, some red, gives it a little inconsistent look, a little bit more of a natural metal finish. A lot of little detailing, I mean, all the way down to the Adidas stripes right here on the side, and more stripes on the top. The one thing I do want to get off right now, yeah, the left foot is identical. Don't go scrambling in the box like I did looking for a missing foot because there is only one of the hyper mode feet, which is accurate. I have actually double checked that. That is how it's supposed to be designed. So a lot of the detailing here, you can tell, incredible. It really captures the look of hyper mode really well and gives it a lot of nice extra detailing. Uh, Articulation-wise, nothing is really hindered from the original Kabuto mode, except for here. His arm can't quite go down now. It's got to clear for the Hyper Zector. Kind of wish that was a little bit flatter, so it wouldn't interfere so much. But that's really the only downside to this. The mode is otherwise gorgeous, doesn't really hinder any of the articulation, and, well, there's just... It's, what can I say, it's, it's just a gorgeous lo looking mode. And once again, your accessories, you can still use the weapons in this mode because all of the hands were repainted in hyper mode color, which you can see a lot of intricate detailing on the hands. All the, the spaces in between the knuckles have been painted and the tips of his fingers have been painted all the way around. So they're a lot more detailed than the standard hand and do look amazing. And what better time to show off Hyper Mode's signature weapon, the Perfect Zector. Fully realized, detailed, painted, and it is a glorious looking thing to behold. Just to give you a good show of this, all the detailing up. This detailing in here to give it the appearance of a bug wing. Very intricate detail, very nicely included. You can see a lot of the patterns and detailing here, as well as the four buttons. Now even though the Zector does have alternate modes, this is a solid piece. Even though this does have a trigger molded in, and even though it does have buttons for rider shooting, it, it cannot fold down. So this is a static handle, be careful with it. And while it is big, he can, well hang on, he can hold it, though I should make a point. Uh, see, Kabuto in both modes, I should I should have mentioned this earlier, has two holding hands, but they are both right-handed. One open, which is generally for his kunai gun mode, and one closed, which is for all of his weapon modes. This is a little bit scary to use because of how closed in that thumb is. So this is why I haven't trimmed my fingernails lately, because you do have to kind of get in there and open it up a little bit. So while, it, so while this is a little bit intimidating to do, you're not going to break anything, so don't worry too much. And while it is a big, heavy weapon, Kabuto can more than handle its girth. He's very stiff in the shoulder joints, and his wrist, because it is hinged only inward, doesn't slouch or slump while holding it. It makes for an incredibly imposing accessory and really finishes off hyper mode nicely. Or maybe not. We're not done with hyper mode, are we? <sighs> right. Back to Lego forming. Hyper clock up. Okay, again, we've had a lot of part changing, so once again, we look in. Now, uh, there isn't quite as much this time, but what they did change in this mode is extensive. And apparently going to be hard for me to light because it's all very internal. But the most, the, the biggest difference you can see right there is the chest, where a lot of vents have opened up. And right down to three little blue nodes right there in the middle that have been painted. The paint job itself, nice kind of two-tone golden bronze, really, really emphasizing a lot of metallic look that this toy's been going for the whole time, and succeeding very well, I might add. Everything else, all these open panels, 
are all done in completely clear plastic. The orange and the red, that's all painted on, and it gives it a really, really, really cool look. But the translucent plastic for these panels give it a really energetic look, which is perfect for this hyper mode. And really, you know, there's not a whole lot to say, but it is a much appreciated design touch to include. And of course, the wings. Yeah, the wings are pretty much the biggest detail here, aren't they? Very obvious. Two-tone paint job again. It's blue going up into orange the closer you get to the body. This is also reveals the shell on the back has been opened up with a lot of jet engines molded in. A lot of detailing again going on. Now I should mention, these are pegged in so you can adjust the wings a little bit inside but if you want to raise the wings up or lower them down they do curve here which is fully hinged and rotates completely around so if you want a if you want an angelic kabuto that is possible too he is walking the path of heaven after all there is so much to this toy and believe it or not we're not done yet luckily this one doesn't require as much part forming but the part in question uh, is a little bit different. Final form Lido. K -K -K Kabuto. Mode number four, and here we find the strangest one yet. This is the Kabuto Zector form, otherwise known as Final Form Ride Kabuto. This is an oddball, uh, yeah, to say the least. Let me show you detailing wise first, since that's usually where I start, because there is a ton on here. Once again, SIC bringing you tons of molded detail that is completely pointless but looks really cool. And you can see a lot of extra ones like, well, we've got these huge turbine engines and fans at the top for them. Huge, huge legs, which uh, I absolutely love this detail. One, two, three. Rider kick. This is a little touch that I love, and I even love how it's molded in to look like like the digital numbers on a clock or a stopwatch. It is a really small touch, but it is awesome, and the way they usually do. Again, with the small details, you can see where there's exhaust burn here, where the engines fire up on the Zector, which is a very subtle detail, which is a really cool one. And going up the back, a lot of little rivets, a lot of little screws painted and molded in. You can see right here at the top, the Zect logo molded into the dial in the center. It's a clear plastic, but either due to my lighting not quite reaching it, or because there's a huge figure stuffed inside of here, it's really hard to make out the translucid effect. And yes, I, met, I did say there's a huge figure stuffed in there, because in order to transform Kabuto, you literally have to break him in half and jam him in there. It's the legs here at, that replace the leg armor and f actually forms the full body. But the rest of it's just kind of sitting in there. It kind of seems pointless. You literally do have to break this guy in half because he has no engineering for folding that way. So you have to take his pelvis piece off, legs and all, and add a crotch extension. I'll give you a second to giggle. Okay, that's long enough. But that's really the only way they had to engineer this in, just to get the figure in there. And while, yeah, it does give him some bulk under, on the underside and gives his legs a place to attach to, I don't know. It seems kind of forced, but I don't know, maybe that's just me. You can see, even under under here, you've got painted detailing, so even the parts you'd probably never see, notice, or care to be detailed, they actually did add the detailing. Again, I absolutely love this. And speaking of detailing, that huge gold horn makes an appearance here, of course, as well as one of the creepiest bug faces I've ever seen. You've got little antenna here, just like a beetle would have, and you've got what would probably be beetle eyes. I would assume I'm not a biologist, but what surprises me is you have what is essentially a really monsterized form of Kabuto's head. But it is cool. I mean, I'm not complaining. There's a lot of cool little details in this in this mode, despite uh, despite being so clunky and lacking in articulation. This is actually translucent red plastic to separate out 
the horn lever, which does not move, by the way, and the rest of the toy. For articulation, as I mentioned, it's limited, but it's there. You can swivel these feet, and it's a little bit difficult for me to tell. I can't tell which of these feet actually move this way because of an actual intended joint, or I don't know. Some like the front on the front legs, they don't move. On the back legs, they do. I can't tell if this is just painted shut and mine is just really sticking or what. But either way, you don't really have a lot you can do with that articulation. The only one that's really of use is to open up the shell and give him his wings. Again, completely translucent yellow plastic, easy to see here, and little exhausts and engines molded in again. Small details, I love them. And the, and the wings do add a nice effect to the toy itself, giving it a lot of imposing detail. But overall, it's mostly an extra. It's a really big extra, but mm, for decade fans, this is probably a really appreciated mold. Maybe I can't quite appreciate it because I don't have SIC decade. But how about we take him to a more normal looking form for one last look. Come in, Lido. Kabuto. And finally, to give you one last look at Kabuto in his standard form, we find decade form. And this form consists just of replacing his belt with the Deca driver, giving you the appearance of Kamen Rider Decade transformed into Kamen Rider Kabuto. Now, as a small accessory, it's still pretty well done. I mean, you've got a you've got a red crystal there in the center. All the little marks associated with the Deca driver are present, along with the little buttons on the side. And well, <laughs> it's a minor change, but it's an appreciated one. I mean, there are a few poses you can get this guy into that really only make sense with Decade. What I really like about this mode is the Ride Booker accessory, because it is pretty much fully realized. It doesn't open up. However, you can move the handle and turn it into gun mode, or fully extend it and attach the removable blade, and you have the Ride Booker in sword mode. So he can be fully realized as Decade, even if he does look like Kamen Rider Kabuto. I actually really like the detailing on this thing. There's some really intricate design work and painted details in here. A lot of little grooves that aren't present on the standard Ride Booker blade. So, once again, you can kind of tell they've really gone out of their way to make SIC toys really interesting to look at. So yeah, it's a simple mode, but it is a mode, and it is even more that this toy can do. And anything more is impressive. SIC Kabuto is a worthy purchase for any Kamen Rider Kabuto fan. Now I know the big sticking point to this toy is its price, which is a little much for one figure. However, you will find few action figures that do as much as this one does, and for Kabuto fans, it is an all-in-one Kamen Rider Kabuto experience. This one was kindly provided by Hobby Link Japan, where you can go get yours now, if they haven't sold out by the time you've watched this. If you, they have, well, I'm sorry, you were too slow. Should have clocked up. But if you are lucky enough to get your hands on this one, you're not going to be disappointed. Now, if you excuse me... I've got a lot of parts to clean up. If you buy the toy, have storage ready. <laughs>